Hi, and welcome to Belmont Journal, Belmont's new show and community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. And first, let's start with the community announcements. Leonard Street is completely open to traffic again. The barriers and flowers were removed on Monday morning. It put a closing to the Belmont Center outdoor experience for this year. The Belmont Center Association is already planning for holidays fun starting on November 25th with a flannel Friday. More to come. The Belmont Health Department is holding a COVID-19 booster shot clinic for Belmont residents 65 years and older on Tuesday, November 9th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Bethel Temple Center located at 3 Concord Ave. To register, go to the link at the bottom of the screen or call to 617-993-2720 or email Lindsay Sharp at lsharp at belmontma.gov for assistance. Belmont resident and World War II veteran Jerry Gennari turned 100 on Halloween. He served in the United States Army overseas in the Asiatic Pacific Theater from 1942 to 1945. He celebrated with family and friends at his home, where he's lived since 1957. And the American Legion Post 440 in Newton honored him with a special presentation of their appreciation coin. Joanna Jubilis brings us the story. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Here's the, here's, the, here's the guy right there. Here he is. Present arm. Um. Order arm. Um. Jerry Gennier. Yeah. On behalf of the Sons of the American Legion, we would like to thank you for your service to our country during your tour of duty in World War II and supporting the cause of freedom. We, the Sons of the American Legion, honor all veterans past and present. Thank you, Mr. Gennier, for a job well done, and happy 100th birthday. I'm thanking you because I'm honored by this and what you said. And I served in uh, World War II, and I was in the Philippines when the first atomic bomb was dropped. And the Japanese would not surrender at the stage. So President Truman dropped the second bomb. And that was the end of WW2 in the Pacific. God bless America. Now let's welcome Joanna Jubilis, a multimedia journalist from Wicked Local and Belmont Cities in Herald. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Maribel. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Very well. Today we have a sad topic about a gray man, and we started with that. Yes, I think that is a very appropriate way to describe Rabbi Earl Groman. He was a great man. He was known as a pioneer in the field of death and dying, a grief counselor who authored almost 30 books in his lifetime. He lived in Belmont for 68 years. He was married to his wife, Netta, for 72 years. And he was the founding rabbi of Bethel Temple in Belmont, 
where he served for 36 years. He died on October 15th of congestive heart failure at the age of 96. And I actually had the opportunity, Maribel, to interview the rabbi in 2013 for uh, Belmont Media Center, a show that I had back then called Belmont Citizen Health Reports. And I can honestly say he was an amazing human being and he, he actually touched my soul. And I can't say that about anybody else in this life, in this world that I know. Um, his daughter, Sharon, actually shared three quotes with me that he was known for. I'll share, um, I'll share one of them with you. Grief, grief is not, grief is love not wanting to let go. And there will be a memorial service planned for the public. There's no date yet. Uh, they're waiting for it to be more safe from COVID and donations in the rabbi's memory can be sent to Bethel Temper, Temple Center or Saul's Light which is a New Orleans-based nonprofit created in memory of the rabbi's great-grandson, uh, Saul Nova. Thank you for the info. Rest in peace. Welcome. We're going to change topics. We have two new um, business. I do have some business news. Two Tempted is actually an existing boutique in Cushing Square. It's been there for a couple of years. Um, the owner is opening a pop-up shop at Watertown's Arsenal Yards just for the holidays. She plans to open later this month. It'll be open for about six months there. And um, if you haven't been to Arsenal Yards yet, I highly recommend going by there. They do have these little pop-up shops and she hopes it'll get more exposure to her, to bring more people to her Belmont store because it's still difficult, you know, to be a local business uh, in Belmont. But um, her clothes are really unique. You can't get them. You can't find them in a regular department store. So I recommend checking it out. That's too tempted. And um, there's also a new place to dine in Belmont. It's Cafe Vanak. It's located at 271 Belmont Street next to Super Vanak. And if anyone was familiar with Seta's Cafe, that's where Seta's Cafe used to be. But this is a different uh, place. Place. It's, it specializes in Persian cuisine. It's owned by Watertown residents, Zorai Beheshti and Baba, uh, Baba Shams Asaf, and I'm probably killing their names, but they, their menu includes items that, you know, vegetarians and meat lovers both will, will enjoy and unique things like uh, barberry juice. Have you ever had barberry juice, Maribel? No, I need well, to try. if you like sour, Let's just say barberry juice is very sour. And she said it's very popular. I tried it. I'll admit I didn't like it. But a lot of people do like things like that. So it depends. Everyone has different taste. <laughs> yes, I did visit and I love the sweets they have. Yeah. Oh, great, yeah. Great option. The sweets there. <laughs> and now we have a, another update on the 40B. Yeah, you I reported on this previously. The Zoning Board of Appeals rendered a decision after about um, I don't know, I think it was like nine months long of, you know, meetings and hearings for this 40B development proposed for 91 Beatrice Circle, 12 units of uh, rentals, uh, three of them affordable. So the town has spent about 68000 so far on legal fees for, for this uh, project. And, uh, you know, just when you thought it was over, it's actually not over because two appeals have been filed. The developer files an appeal with the Housing Appeals Committee. And they're basically saying the decision with 161 conditions was basically a denial and they want to see it all overturned and they want to, you know, it basically the decision would make them only be able to build seven units instead of 12. And it's, they have to redesign the whole project. And then the abutters filed an appeal with a uh, land court against the zoning board of appeals, as well as the developers. They want the decision to be annulled and they want it, uh, the land to be just for single family dwelling, one single family dwelling. So this is gonna go on in, in court for a while, more legal fees for the town, and we will see what happens. I'll be following the case to the end, whenever that may be. And now with us, Franklin Tucker, the editor of the Belmontonian.com. Welcome, Franklin. How are you? I'm in Cushing Square outside a coffee shop, and it's a beautiful day. Great, I'm doing very well. And today we have some news about the community path. That's right. The community path came out with a, um, a milestone mark of 25% uh, design, um, which means that uh, uh, Niche Engineering, which is the town's um, uh, company that is doing the uh, planning for the community path, has come up with 25% uh, of its uh, design, which is a, which is really a milestone because it really gives you some detail on how that how this is going to be 
uh, uh, done. And um, it really is a, a point of, it's almost like a tipping point. When you get to this point, you, you're ready to start to ask for uh, funds from the state and from the federal government. And it's also uh, that people can see the actual design and, and can, can finally envision it. All right. Then do we have some timeline? Can we think of it? It's going to be a while. <laughs> you know, it won't be done before the, the rest of the high school is done. It'll be, in, it'll be in a number of years. You know, it's kind of hard to always say, you know, how, how you know, what's going to happen, especially in, in financial times when you really don't know what the, um, what, where the fundings, you know, you know where the funding sources are. You don't know how stable those funding sources are. But, you know, the state and the state and federal government are very high on this uh, project because it will be an important link on a on a larger project that will go from the middle of mass from the middle of Massachusetts from Berlin Massachusetts all the way to Cambridge so it's an important um, uh, trail that that uh, everybody's looking forward for so Belmont's an important segment because it is a uh, urban suburban area with a lot of uh, you know details that are kind of challenging such as Belmont Center so it's going to uh, so but right now it's uh, moving forward and it's uh, a, a uh, for supporters of this, this is a great moment. That's right. And changing the topic, we have some news about the number of people vaccinated in high school. <clears throat> That's right. Um, uh, Belmont uh, is um, has a very high vaccination rate um, among its high school students. It's basically 90%, so 9 out of 10 children have that. And what that means is that they've uh, reached the threshold that the uh, state government has said that uh, schools can now uh, do away with masks. Um, we've seen one school system uh, over in Hopkinton uh, move forward uh, uh, to take away masks on a test basis for three weeks to see how, 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 how that works if they get an increase in, if they get an increase in, in cases or infections and how the uh, students and faculty uh, work with without masks anymore. Uh, and uh, when I wrote a piece about this and, and and showing that um, uh, that uh, uh, Superintendent Phelan, uh, John Phelan, said it's basically up to the health department to tell you know to give us uh, some idea how we will go forward. Um, you know, uh, the number of comments were, "Let's do it. Let's go." You know, even people said, "I've supported um, <clears throat> you know masks and and distancing and 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 ventilation. Maybe it is time to um, to." Uh, uh, now take that next step. You know, in the Atlantic um, magazine, there was a great article about how we, how the country has to now view uh, this pandemic as an endemic, which means this is going to be something that happens year after year. And um, and uh, so I think people in Belmont are saying the same question: When do we take the masks off? I mean, we've hit that threshold. Now what? And changing the subject, we're going for a sports. That's right. Uh, we have uh, tournament time. Um, and uh, this year, uh, if we had the old system, which was based on just wins and losses, uh, none of uh, Belmont's uh, sports teams that go through tournaments would have made the tournament this year. But fortunately enough, there's a new system, uh, which is based on power ranking, which is like the strength of schedule of your opponent and the wins you have and how big you won games um, is more critical than wins and losses. And for that reason, Volleyball, boys soccer, and uh, field hockey made the tournament this year. So it's great. That's great. Thank you, Franklin, for the information. And see you next time. Thank you. I'll still be outside. This week, Lisa Givalerio, Prevention Specialist from Wayside Youth and Family Support Network and coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition, comes back on the show to give an update on the COVID vaccine and flu shots. She's interviewed by Mike Crowley. Getting started with COVID, what's the news and how are things looking? Thanks, Mike. So overall, the news is good. COVID cases are dropping in Massachusetts as well as most states across the country. Um, the ferocity that we've been dealing with with Delta is starting to wane for sure. Um, other good news, booster shots are now widely available for many adults. And a vaccine for kids um, ages 5 through about 11 is on its way. So, Lisa, let me ask you more about that vaccine for the kids. Has it, has it been fully approved? It is getting there today. The FDA has approved it, and the CDC is meeting just today, Mike and hopefully they will be approving it as well. And once the CDC does their approval process, 
uh, the rollout for this vaccine will begin. And let me ask you about the vaccine's effectiveness. What do we know? Well, according to the trial, which um, tested the vaccine in in about 3,000 kids, it is 90% effective. So that's excellent. That's a great efficacy rate. Should parents have any safety concerns? Not for most kids, Mike. Um, the, the typical side effects from this vaccine mirror those of adults. So some kids got tired, uh, a slight fever, certainly a sore arm, but those very serious side effects that we worry about were really negligible. Not many kids experienced those at all. Let me ask you, Lisa, about the kids aged four and under. Is there any vaccine on the horizon for them? There is, Mike. That, uh, that age group, ages about two to four, is currently being uh, studied. And I have read that um, uh, the approval process for that age group should be um, underway in the next few months. All right, Lisa, let me ask you about COVID booster shots. What do we need to know? So booster shots are widely available right now for adults. Um, it sort of depends, Mike, on which vaccine you originally received. So for those who received Moderna or Pfizer, you have to have had your last shot six months ago. And if you received the J&J, &J, the Johnson & Johnson, you can schedule your booster shot if you received that vaccine two months ago. Um, they do say that mix and matching of the vaccine is okay, especially for those who received the J&J. &J. They're actually recommending that their booster be Moderna or Pfizer. Can any adult get a booster, Lisa? So technically, no, Mike. Um, there are three requirements. First of all, they would like those getting them to be over 65. You do qualify if you are under 65 and are immunocompromised, or if you are under 65 and are a frontline worker. However, the caveat seems to be that these booster shots are so widely available that they are not strictly enforcing those three requirements I just listed. Okay. So for example, I went on the CVS website just to see if I could obtain a booster shot and it was no problem. So there are requirements, but they don't appear to be strictly enforcing those. Um, in our last minute, Lisa, tell us why it's important to get a flu shot. Well, getting a flu shot is the single most powerful action you can take to actually prevent getting the flu. Um, flu shots protect you, they protect the people around you, and you don't wanna get the flu while hospitals and, and healthcare workers are still dealing with COVID. Um, you actually can get the flu shot at the same time as your COVID booster, and flu shots are just widely recommended for all of us between the ages you know, above six months and all the way up. So it's a good idea just to protect yourself from getting the flu. All right, thank you, Lisa. And I'll just remind our viewers to be sure to also watch our weekly COVID updates with Lin Lindsay Sharp. Time is out for the farmer's market. Last week was the last market of the season. Belmont Journal was there. This is our 16th season. Mm -hmm. And um, this has been a great year. We started out with um, some pandemic rules in place because we weren't sure what was happening. And after a while, it seems safe enough to get rid of most of them. We still have the vendors spaced out for social distancing, but we've had record um, attendance, more shoppers than ever. And we do a snap match, which is uh, snap is what food stamps are currently called. And we double people's snap up to $25 a week. And we have doubled more uh, than we ever have. We've given away more money in snap matching than ever. So it's been a pretty good season. I think what COVID did is, is bring a lot of people that were uncomfortable going into a store. So they discovered the market and they stayed. And this season, we've got a lot of new people and the match is so good. Uh, one of the best around. So I think a lot of people come for that because there is a bigger need. We need the help of, of volunteers and we had a great um, group of volunteers from older people um, to younger kids. And, and it's awesome. It's great for them to get community hours and it's amazing for us to have them here and they've all been excellent. 
Uh, so it's, it's we really appreciate it. So to all the high schoolers out there, like get ready for next season. We need you. <laughs> you know, one of the things I learned over the years was it's not just about food. There's a real community component. We have community information and we have music. People make friends, run into friends. And we're here really to support the vendors. Uh, farmers markets support small businesses and farms, right? It's important to have farms nearby. Next year we will be open. <laughs> That's all we know. Yes. Um, so far we, as, as we do the shopper survey and we do a vendor survey. And so far all the answers is that they want to come back. So most likely will be more of the same uh, vendors and hopefully we'll sprinkle a couple of new ones to keep it exciting. Um, but it, so far a lot of all of them are coming back. So. It's a bittersweet thing when the season ends. We're sad to see it go but gosh it's cold and it gets dark and we're yes. a little tired you know after all this. Um, in November we'll, we'll review the season see how it went and then in January or, or so we'll start planning the next year but it's nice to have just a little bit of time off in between. And now our community calendar. Don't toss your pumpkins because Belmont Helps and Butler PTA are teaming up for a great pumpkin and pennies rescue. Bring all your pumpkins Sunday, November 7th between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m and Black Earth Compost will take care of them. Belmont Helps is also collecting your loose change and dollars. Even checks are welcome to continue to help the community. All donations will be matched dollar for dollar by Mark and Angie Gregor, up to $5,000. Join Belmont Books to celebrate the launch of Lynn Reeves' latest book, The Dangers of an Ordinary Night on Tuesday, November 9th at 7 p.m. The author will discuss her book, that explore the explosive family secrets that often hide in plain sight with best-selling author Hank Philippi Ryan. Registration on Eventbrite. The Pitcha Street Center is excited to welcome back Karen Antonowicz from Spirits of Fashion on Friday, November 12th at 1.15 p.m. If you have a special piece of clothing that was passed down in your family, prom dresses, hats, or special suits, this event is definitely for you, but any fashion addict is welcome. The event is free, but call 617-993-2976 to register. Don't venture outside and prepare. Learn how to get the most out of your hikes with your family in Mass Audubon free online program on Friday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m. Discover the unique quirks that can come from hiking with a wide range of ages and abilities in your family and how to make the most out of your time together outdoors. Doug Laurie, the instructor, will give you tips and tricks for navigation and interpretation and popular hiking routes appropriate for families throughout Massachusetts. The event is free to participate, but registration is required. How to be sure that you're getting useful facts about politics, social media and pandemic reports by going beyond headlines? Get pro tools and tactics from David Wallace, a former business tech reporter for the New York Times and Routers, and journalism lecturer at Boston University with the Belmont Public Library on Tuesday, November 16 at 7 p.m. Registration is required on the Belmont Public Library website. And that's all for this week's edition. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.